Hey there, I just wanted to jump in here and just give you a little bit of information about watercolor brushes, just to help you maybe choose some watercolor brushes without breaking the bank. Now this isn't the end all be all, everything you ever wanted to know about watercolor brushes, but hopefully this will give you some information so that you can confidently buy your watercolor brushes without breaking the bank. And you know, just some tips on what to look for, you know, the things that you would need in a good watercolor brush. And then I'll give you some suggestions about some watercolor brushes you might wanna try. So let's just go ahead and get started. Let's talk about brushes. The first thing you need to know before you buy a watercolor brush, the things that you need to consider are the price. You don't want to go over your budget. The construction, make sure that it is constructed well, that the tuft fibers are clean, they go to a nice edge, they're not splayed, frayed, or just raggedy. You don't want a raggedy brush. Make sure that the ferrule is smooth and there it is not a crimped ferrule, meaning that it is a crimped in the center and it has, it'll have a crimped line down it. You don't want that. You want a solid ferrule that is seamless. You want to make sure that the handle is nice and straight. You don't want a bent handle. You don't want a nicked or gouged or any kind of problems with the handle because once there's a nick, then water can go down into that ferrule. It will cause the brush handle to swell if it's a wooden brush handle. It'll cause it to swell and then it'll cause it to contract once the water dries up and over time that will cause your handle to be loose in the ferrule and it can even cause you to lose some of your tufts because they'll become loose as well. So make sure that your handle is in good working order and condition. The other thing you want to check out, make sure it feels good in your hand. Make sure it feels balanced. Make sure that whenever you press down on it, it responds. It's not so stiff that it won't move. You'll have, you have to jam it down. Make sure that it responds with your touch the way that you paint. Make sure that it goes back. It'll be wet. You can hit it on the back of your hand and it'll go right back into its intended shape, which would be pointed if it's a pointed round or it would be flat if it's a flat edge brush. So it will go back into its intended shape really quickly. So those are the basic things you wanna look for when you're buying a brush. But I'm gonna cover a few more things. First of all, you wanna know what the fiber, the tip, the tuft, whatever you wanna call it, is made out of. Now you can buy 100% natural hair brushes. Kalinsky Sables are very expensive. They are the gold standard. I do have one somewhere, but I don't know what, I, what I've done with it. Um, I do have a Kalinsky Sable brush. It cost me over $100, and I'm gonna tell you, I rarely use it. Rarely use it. It's a good brush. It does all, everything it's supposed to, but I just don't use it that much. I tend to use the more synthetic brushes. Synthetic hairs are a little bit, um, less durable than natural hair, but they've made them now that they can mimic natural hair so well that you really don't need to buy a natural hair brush if you don't want to. But now I do have some other natural hairs. Kalinsky Sable is the gold standard. You can also get camel, squirrel, ox, um, goat. This one is goat hair and it is a hockey brush or a hockey brush, or some people call it a hake. You can call it whatever you want to, but it still has goat hair. And the goat hair, this is good for really wet on wet because it holds tons of water and paint. The downside for a beginner is it releases that paint and water so fast you lose control and you can end up making a mess with it. There's also boar hair or hog hair. They are very stiff. It comes from the back of a hog, obviously. And what I use these for are scrubber brushes when I've either made a mistake, have paint where I don't want it, or where I want to make a highlight if I've gotten too much paint and you just wet these and then scrub them and then you'll just take a Kleenex and clean up that excess paint. So I use those to make highlights and as scrubber brushes. So now we're gonna to go to the shapes. 
The shapes of the brush are flat, and this is a wash brush. They're exceptionally wide, but they are flat. You can get them even wider if you need. Um, this is a one and a half. You can usually, they come in one and a half to two inches, but you can get them larger. That's if you work on large size pieces of art and you need a large wash put down. Then of course, flat brushes, and you can get those in all different sizes as well. They're good for, um, doing geometrical shapes. If you want to paint geometrical shapes, they're good for lines if you hold them on the very edge and do it. Then there are pointed rounds. These are the workhorses of watercolor. They are round. They have a good belly, which means that they hold a lot of water and paint. They have a nice pointed tip so that you can get those details in there. Um, and they release the water gradually, the water and the paint gradually, so that it's a little bit easier con to control. And I always suggest for my beginners to at least get a size eight pointed round. If you can't afford any other brushes, that's your workhorse. This is a pointed round, it's a size 30. So you can see the difference in the size, but they come in different sizes. And this is my favorite for beginners. This, there's a set of these. And these are um, Creative Mark Mimic squirrel, Faux Squirrel Hair Brushes. They're great for beginners. They do hold a lot of water and paint, so you have to kind of get used to that, but I like that. And I will um, put that somewhere so that y'all can find the link. Maybe I'll go into Discord and link those. Then you can have an oval cat's tongue. This is a very versatile brush. Of course, you can use the pointed end, just like a pointed round but you can also turn it in different angles and it makes great florals, great foliage, leaves, things like that. Plus with the tip, you can get into small areas, but with the width of it, you can also cover large areas. So it's very versatile, but it's not a have to have. Then you have, you can either call this a liner or a rigger brush. It's got a long tuft on it. The use of it, it, it holds a Good amount of paint, a good amount of water, and it will release it nice and consistently and slowly. It's used mostly by nautical painters to do the rigging on boats, but it can also be used for tree branches, um, foliage, leaf, you know, stems, leaves, things like that. Anywhere you need a nice, consistent, fine line, that's your brush. Then you have this oval brush. It is the cousin to the cat tongue. It only has one curve instead of being completely oval. It does almost the same thing. Again, you can get all of these brushes in different sizes. But this one has the nice point, so you could use that point for your delicate work, for your details. You can use the larger edge to get larger areas. Also, when you turn this one, you can get all kinds of dynamic shapes and different things. Really good again for florals and things like that. Then you have your fan brush. It's obviously shaped like a fan. I use this one mostly to do a dry brush technique. I just dip it straight into the paint and then I'll just dab it and it makes little blobs on the paper and it's really good for leaves and foliage especially if you're doing landscapes, or you can you can do it like in a line and it'll make wood grain, or you can just flick it and it will make beautiful grass-like marks, strokes. So all of these, this is not the whole list of watercolor brushes, but these are some types that you can get. So let's recap. You want a good price, you want it well constructed, you want it to perform well. You can get as far as the tufts go, you can get natural hair, you can get synthetic hair, or you can get a blend. Synthetic has come so far that it almost mimics natural hair now, so that is a good thing. The downside to synthetic, they do wear out a lot faster than natural hair. You can get all different shapes. You can get flats, rounds, ovals, uh, fans. You can get scrubber brushes. You can get cat tongues and liners, but you don't need all of those to start. A good round pointed brush is the best thing for any, any beginner. It is the workhorse and it will get you through a lot of painting before you have to invest in other brushes. So if you have a limited budget, that's the one that I suggest. show you just a few strokes that you can make with these just to kind of show you what they do a little bit just so you'll know 
So the round brush again, that is my my favorite for any beginner. You can do thicker lines. You can put it on its tip and do and just do really thin lines. You can do wide lines. You can cover a large amount of space with it. Or you can get into really tiny areas. So I really like this brush because it is so versatile. Like I said, it's the workhorse. The workhorse of watercolor. So that was the round brush. Just a few, I'm just showing you a few strokes of what they do. And then you'll have the flat brush. This one's wide. I usually do a half inch, but I'm going to show you how it, how it performs as well. You can get really a lot of coverage. I don't have enough paint in my mix, but you can get a lot of coverage. You can get geometrical shapes with it. You can also put it on its side and do lines as well. You can also get some like some really interesting texture when you kind of overlap it like that so that is the flat brush and then the wash brush is to care is to just cover large background areas mostly or if you work in a large scale it will cover your background really quickly so oh, I don't have enough water sorry so a wash brush just covers a large area really quickly. That's the main reason you use a wash brush. I don't use them often because I don't paint that large. Um, a dagger brush, I t as I said before, it's great for petals. It's the one that has the point on one side and it's curved on the other. It makes great floral petals. It also can make great great leaf shapes just by the different pressures that you put on it. It can also do lines. You can get a tiny line if you turn it over to that point. Tiny little lines. So it's pretty versatile too. Alright, that's the dagger brush. Then you have the fan brush, which I told you is great for texture. So let's let's dip in here with some rounds. It makes great texture. You can also do lines with it, curvy lines, straight lines. You can also do like tree foliage really fast make a little quick tree or bush or something so that's the kind of marks it makes that's the fan brush <laughs> then you have the, the liner brush or some t or rigger whatever you want to call it a rigger brush is perfect for nautical paintings it makes long fine lines and if you press it down, they'll be a little bit fatter. But mostly it makes really delicate lines. You could even do like lines that cross each other to make it look like netting. You can do like twigs, branches of a tree, twig shapes. So you can do eyelashes. I don't know anything you need a long fine line or any kind of fine line. That's the liner. Then you got the cat's tongue, which is very similar to the the um, dagger brush. You can do fine lines by using the very tip of it. You can do really wide by pressing that down. You can get into small areas by just using the tip, so you can just paint really small areas. You can paint shapes, you know, different shapes of flowers if you want to, or leaves. You can turn it as you are painting. Start it off and then turn it to get some different shapes. Mine's not doing right, but you get the idea. 
So that's the cat's tongue. And then you have the, the hake or the hockey brush. And like I said, it holds tons of water. And look, it, I mean, it is really, really wet. When it drops the water in the paint, it is just wet. It is, I mean, it'll run. It, that's how much it drops. So that is used for really wet and wet techniques. So that's just basics, just basics. Now the thing that you want to look for when you have, when you wanna buy a brush, I'm just gonna tell you about the round brush. Let me see. I'm just gonna turn this over for right now. Now, what you wanna look for in a good brush before you purchase it, first is price, something you can afford. Uh, you wanna make sure that the handle is straight. It's not catawonky. It doesn't have nicks in it because if it has nicks or some of the lacquer or the paint has been taken off, water can get down into this ferrule. That is this metal ring that holds the handle to the tuft. And if water gets down in there, it can loosen it and it'll ruin your brush. So you want to make sure that your handle is nice and solid with no nicks, no cracks, nothing that can get water down into that ferrule. On the ferrule, you want it to be seamless, meaning it doesn't have a line where it was crimped on. It is one continuous tube around the brush and it, it is crimped on at this end and at this end, but with no fold over or any line there. I don't have a brush that actually has a crimp line. Now for the tuft, you want it to make sure that it has a nice full belly. This is the belly of the brush. That's the fat part. You want it to come, if it's an, if it is a round brush, you want it to come to a nice point, a, a really beautiful point. If it is a flat brush, you want it to come to a beautiful even edge. You don't want hairs to be, you know, sticking out from the sides like, like so. You don't want it to look like that. You know how sometimes I'll have those stray hairs. You want them all to be nice and together, nice and shapely. You'll want to make sure that it um, holds plenty of paint. You'll want to make sure that it's responsive. What I mean by responsive is if you're doing a light, if you've got light pressure, then it handles that, does the light. And as you press, it will spread out and respond to the pressure of your hand. Oh, I love, I love my round brushes. You'll also want to make sure that it, that once you use it, like I've, I've used it, I'm painting with it, and the, you see how the tip is not quite pointy, you'll want to make sure that it'll spring back into shape. See, now it comes to that perfect point just by hitting it on your wrist. It comes, so that is perfect. It comes to perfect point. So it has good spring. It has great um, control as you press, put pressure on it. It performs well. You want it to feel good in your hand, feel like it's balanced and that's, that's the main things. You want to look for price. You want to make sure that it is good construction. You want to make sure that there's no raggedy um, hairs, loose hairs coming off. You want to make sure that the ferrule is not loose. The handle's not cracked. You want to make sure that it perform, performs well and that it responds to your touch and to the weight of your hand and the pressure of your hand. And you'll want it to spring back to shape just by hitting it on your wrist and it should come exactly back to its proper shape. And that's for any shape of brush, but particularly for your round brushes. So there, there's your, a quick little primer. If you have any, any questions about brushes that I didn't cover, because of course this is not an end all be all, just ask it in the Discord channel, in the Patreon, and I will be sure to answer you. All right, thanks. On to our next set of tools for watercolor.